Roman concrete has often been revered for its durability, but why exactly is it so much better than modern concrete? It appears to have a magical ability that allows it to self-heal cracks, makes it resistant to seawater, and allows it to become stronger over time. A series of recent studies have shed light on this and revealed that Roman concrete's durability is connected with its ingredients and how the environment reacts to it over time. Before we dive in, I have to thank my patrons on Patreon for making this whole channel possible, and also the sponsor of today's video, Blinkist. As you know, the main purpose of my channel is to try and condense complex topics into a more digestible format. I spend a lot of time reading papers, and this does not allow me a lot of time to wander off topic in my research. Luckily, this is where Blinkist has made a huge difference to me. It is an app that allows you to understand the most important parts from over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts, often in as little as 15 minutes. Better still, you can either read this on your phone or on the web, or you can have it read to you. Now, you might be saying that there is no substitute for actually reading a book, and you're right, but ask yourself the question, do you have enough time to read all the books you would like? For me, the simple answer is no, but with Blinkist I can cover many more books and decide those which are worth reading in more detail. This will save me hours of wasted time reading books that add little value and thereby not getting to the really important ones. It will also allow me to explore topics I would never have had time for. As part of the research for this video, I read the Blink on a brief history of the Roman Empire. It's not a book I would have had time to read, and this is why I really value what Blinkist can do for me. With our new Blinkist Connect feature, you can even share your premium membership with one other person. So why not get 25% off premium membership and enjoy two memberships for the price of one? Start your free seven day trial by heading over to Blinkist.com forward slash see the pattern. The link will also be down below in the description. And with that, let's dive into the video. To the average person, concrete may seem like an indestructible material. It is used to build huge structures, is nearly completely weatherproof, but how long does modern concrete actually last? There are a number of factors that can affect the lifespan of concrete. The primary ones are ingredients in the mixture, the proportion of those ingredients, and the process and curing techniques used, and lastly, the environment and weather the concrete is exposed to. For large-scale projects like buildings, concrete should last up to 100 years if properly cared for. If exposed to high weathering or high usage, this could be as little as 50 years. And yet, there are concrete structures which are thousands of years old that still stand. Why is our concrete so poor when compared to Roman concrete? The ancient Romans were master engineers constructing vast networks of roads, aqueducts, ports, and massive buildings which have survived for two millennia. Many of these structures were built using concrete. Roman concrete was used in the construction of ancient Rome. Similar to modern equivalents, it was based on a hydraulic setting cement added to an aggregate, but differs in that the aggregates often include larger components, meaning it was laid rather than poured. It was also able to set underwater, which made it useful for bridges and other waterside constructions. Many buildings, bridges, aqueducts and reservoirs were built by the ancient Romans and are still standing today. Rome's famed Pantheon is the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome and was built in 128 CE and is still intact today. Some ancient Roman aqueducts still deliver water to Rome today. This attests to both its versatility and its durability. Roman concrete was in widespread use from about 150 BC, and some scholars believed it was developed a century before that. Researchers have spent decades trying to understand the secrets of this ultra-durable ancient construction material, particularly in structures like docks, sewers and seawalls that endure especially harsh conditions. For many years, researchers had assumed that the key to the ancient concrete's durability was based on one ingredient, volcanic ash 
from an area near the Bay of Naples. They know that this specific kind of ash was shipped all across the vast Roman Empire and was described as a key ingredient for concrete in accounts by architects and historians at the time. When ancient Roman concrete is examined in detail, it revealed that it contained small, indistinctive, millimetre-scale bright white mineral features. These are referred to as lime clasts, and originate from the lime which is a key component of the ancient mix. These features are not found in modern concrete. In the past, they had disregarded this feature as simply poor quality raw materials or sloppy mixing practices. Why would the Romans have put so much effort into making an outstanding construction material, perfected and optimised over many centuries with detailed recipes, then put so little effort into ensuring the production of a well-mixed final product? A new study performed by MIT is revealing that these imperfections may in fact be the key to the longevity of ancient Roman concrete. It appears that these lime clasts give the concrete a self-healing capability. Historically, it was thought that the Romans incorporated lime into the concrete by first combining it with water to form a highly reactive paste-like material in a process called slaking. The problem was that this process cannot account for the presence of the lime clasts. By studying the samples of the ancient concrete, they were able to determine that the white inclusions were made of various forms of calcium carbonate. This is formed by a more reactive form of lime known as quicklime. Their analysis revealed it had been formed at extreme temperatures which are associated with the exothermic reactions produced by using quicklime rather than the slaked lime in the mixture. The process of hot mixing was how they created a super durable material. By using hot mixing, it allows the concrete to be heated to a high temperature, and this allows chemistries that are not possible if you use slaked lime. The second benefit is that the increased temperature increases the rate of reaction, leading to a quicker curing and setting time, allowing for faster construction. The lime clasts, which occur through the hot mixing process, develop a brittle nanoparticulate architecture, creating an easily fractured and reactive calcium source. When a tiny crack develops within the concrete, this will preferentially travel through the high surface area lime clasts. If this then comes into contact with water, it will react, creating a calcium saturated solution. This recrystallizes as calcium carbonate and quickly fills the cracks. Alternatively, it can also react with the ash material in the concrete, which would further strengthen the composite material. These reactions occur spontaneously and heal any cracks before they can spread. Roman concrete also has an incredible resistance to seawater, and the science behind how this works was also a mystery up until recently. Modern concrete is made to be inert, whereas Roman concrete is designed to interact with the environment. In modern concrete, there are chemical reactions that can affect the integrity of the concrete. These include sulfate attack, lime leaching and alkali aggregate expansion. This changes the microstructure and leads to an increase in volume within the concrete, resulting in physical stress and potential cracking. Lime leaching is a process of water passing through the concrete and dissolving calcium hydroxide from the concrete. This is often seen as white patches on the exterior of concrete and leads to a reduction in the strength of the material. Alkali aggregate expansion occurs when aggregates in the concrete, decrease the alkalinity of the cement paste, resulting in the expansion of minerals and cracking of the cement. Roman concrete is not susceptible to any of these processes. When seawater interacts with the mixture, it forms rare minerals, which are believed to strengthen the material. Long-term exposure to seawater causes topomerite to crystallize from another mineral present called philipsite as it becomes more alkali. Topomerite has long plate-like crystals that allow the material to bend rather than crack under stress. This was written about in ancient Roman accounts. As soon as it comes into contact with the waves of the sea and is submerged, it becomes a single stone mass, impregnable to waves and every day stronger. Not only did it have these self-healing properties, but it required less energy to create in the first place. Portland cement is the most common modern concrete blend and lacks the lime-volcanic ash combination compared to Roman concrete. 
This means it doesn't bind as well. To manufacture Portland cement, they need to heat the mixture of limestone and clays to 1450 Celsius. By comparison, the Romans would bake their limestone at just 900 Celsius. So not only does the Roman concrete last longer, meaning you require less of it as it rarely decays, but it also takes less fuel to make in the first place. Roman concrete is not only solid, but durable due to the way it sets and cures. It is salt resistant, more environmentally friendly, less likely to crack under stress with no reinforcements of steel. Most modern concrete is reinforced, which increases its strength significantly compared to normal concrete. Around 10 to 15 times the compressive strength and more than 100 times the tensile strength. This allows for the creation of shallow concrete elements that can span long distances which wouldn't be possible if the concrete were not reinforced. Concrete is brittle and steel is ductile. If a concrete element fails, it is likely to fail suddenly without warning. If there are steel elements present, it will sag and stretch significantly before failure. This makes reinforced concrete fundamentally safer. There is, however, a major drawback with using steel to reinforce concrete. Over time, the steel corrodes and expands, placing internal pressure on the concrete, which eventually results in cracking and the loss of chunks of the material. One drawback of modern concrete is that the quicker set and cure times introduces many more cracks that allow water ingress. A significant drawback for Roman concrete is that it takes longer to set and cure. Obtaining large quantities of volcanic ash is also a limiting factor at the moment, but scientists are looking at how they can incorporate this knowledge to improve modern concrete's properties. And that brings us to the end of this video. A big thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. If you would like to support the channel, then please check out the Blinkist link, which will be down below in the description. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time. <laughs>